is there such a thing as nothing? The concept has been around for more than 5,000 years, at least since the ancient Sumerians first indicated the absence of numbers, effectively inventing the concept of zero. But what is zero, really? The question has vexed philosophers and scientists for millennia, and it's a question that has fascinating implications for the creation of our universe. What was before the singularity? Anything or nothing at all? Was there even a singularity? The answers, it seems, might lie in the realm of quantum physics. So first off, let's talk about nothing. The concept of absolute nothingness is the idea of a state where there's no matter, no energy, no space, no time, and no physical laws. Nothing. It's a state of complete non-existence, void even of a void. Philosophers and scientists have batted around this concept throughout much of recorded history. In ancient Greek philosophy, Parmenides and Democritus argued for the existence of a void, which they called nothingness. Later, in the 17th century, René Descartes proposed the idea of absolute nothingness as a way to prove the existence of God. In modern physics, the concept of absolute nothingness is tied up with the Big Bang and the idea of the singularity, a point of infinite density and zero volume that's thought to have existed at the beginning of the universe, from which everything then exploded in magnificent universal creation. The singularity is sometimes described as a state of absolute nothingness, where even the laws of physics break down. But some scientists and cosmologists argue that the concept of absolute nothingness is meaningless and impossible to define. They suggest that even in a state of complete non-existence, there'd still be some underlying structure or laws governing the behavior of the universe. The implications of absolute nothingness for the creation of the universe are significant. If the universe did come from a state of absolute nothingness, then the question of how it came into existence becomes even more perplexing. To dive deeper into that, it can first help to familiarize ourselves briefly with theories about how the universe came to be. Most of us know about the Big Bang, right? We basically just described it. It's the most popular theory out there explaining how the universe just popped into existence. At its core, though, is the fundamental question. Can something be created from nothing. It's a question that may never actually be answered, and it certainly hasn't been answered yet. Now, in this video, we're going to peer down into the minuscule to see just how close we can get to an answer. I read an article about the Webb telescope, and the, the, what they were taking into consideration is the possibility that the Big Bang may be incorrect, and that the universe might be larger and older than we think. So, I. Uh I hesitate to ask what pages on the internet you hang out on. <laughs> it was a like okay. a legit it wasn't saying the universe is older. It's yeah. saying as more data and new information comes in, there is a distinct possibility that the big bang might just be the it just might explain the reach of the technology and not the actual scale of the universe itself. But there are some other theories out there other than the big bang, some of which skirt around the concept of nothing and others that incorporate the big bang and add on to it in strange and unexpected ways. What follows is by no means an exhaustive list of universal creation theories. They're just a couple of examples that can maybe help us start to wrap our heads around this nothing-something duality. The first is called brain world. Now, in brain world theory, there isn't an explicit concept of zero or nothingness. Instead, the theory proposes that our observable universe is a three-dimensional membrane, or brain, that's embedded in a higher dimensional space known as the bulk. The bulk contains additional brains, and interactions between the brains could have led to the creation of our universe. The brain world theory doesn't necessarily require a specific starting point or a concept of absolute nothingness because it's based on the idea that our observable universe is just one part of a larger, 
multi-dimensional reality. Yet, some interpretations of the theory suggest that this abstract bulk space could be infinite. And this raises yet more questions about the origin of the universe and whether it emerged from a state of nothingness or not. The second is what's called eternal inflation. Now, this theory, first proposed by physicist Alan Guth in 1979, basically explains the Big Bang as just one among many Big Bangs that originate from a kind of mysterious cosmic soup. Think of it this way. Imagine a large pot of boiling water, where each bubble that rises to the surface represents a universe. In this theory, our universe is just one of these bubbles, while the other bubbles represent other universes. The universe is just unbelievably uniform on large scales. And that cannot be understood in the conventional Big Bang picture. Uh, but inflation explains it very naturally. You start with a very small universe which becomes uniform before inflation, and then inflation just takes over and magnifies this tiny uniform speck to become large enough to include everything that we observe. According to this theory, the universe began with a period of rapid expansion called inflation, which caused space itself to stretch and grow exponentially. This inflation continued in certain regions of space, leading to the creation of an infinite number of universes, an infinite number of other big bubbles and big bangs. These universes can have different physical laws and properties, making them unique and distinct from one another. As our universe continues to expand, new bubbles are constantly forming in other regions of space. This means that the multiverse is always growing and changing, with new universes being created all the time. But if our universe is like a bubble in a pot of boiling water, what then is the water? Where did the heat come from? Did the pot, the water and the heat just magically appear from nothing? Well, to figure that out, we have to zoom way, way in to the quantum realm. But first, let's check out one particularly fascinating theory set forth by the late great Stephen Hawking. It has to do with the nature of the singularity, the nature of time and its relationship to quantum mechanics. Hawking's theory was that time itself didn't exist before the beginning of the universe. According to Hawking, the universe began in a state of extreme density, an energy called the singularity. Yet the classic theory of cosmology, which assumes that time is a fundamental and constant feature of the universe, can't explain how the universe began in this state, just like it can't explain how something came from nothing. Hawking's proposal is that in the very early universe, time was indistinct and didn't really have a defined direction or flow. This means that the singularity didn't occur in a specific moment in time because there was no real time when it could have occurred. Confused? Well, don't be. Let's get into the quantum world, which you'll be glad to know is even more confusing. Yeah, sorry about that. Hawking's theory is based on the principles of quantum mechanics, which suggests that time may not be as fundamental as we once thought. According to quantum mechanics, particles can exist in a state of superposition, where they have multiple possible states at once. Hawking proposed that the universe may have existed in a state of superposition before the beginning of time, with all possible states existing simultaneously. This theory has pretty significant implications for the understanding of the early universe and the origin of time itself. It suggests that the singularity wasn't a moment in time, but instead a state of the universe in which time didn't yet exist. The whole thing challenges our classical understanding of cosmology and is opening up new pathways of research into the nature of time and the universe. To try to understand how all possible states could exist simultaneously at the beginning of it all, we'll now need to dive deeper into quantum physics, the stuff that's happening on the tiniest of scales. And to understand that, well, we need to dive into something called the uncertainty principle. The uncertainty principle was first proposed by a guy named Werner Heisenberg. No, 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 not that Heisenberg, this one. It states that we can't measure precisely both the position and the speed of a particle 
at the same time. If we try to measure the location of a particle, say an electron, then it behaves more like a particle. But if we try to measure its speed, it behaves more like a wave. And this is called the wave-particle duality. It's like the electron can't decide if it wants to be a wave or a particle, so it behaves like both. This means that there's always a certain amount of uncertainty or jiggle associated with a particle's position and speed. One consequence of the uncertainty principle is that particles can appear and disappear spontaneously from empty space, a phenomenon called quantum fluctuation. Now, basically, particles can borrow energy from the surroundings for a split second before returning it, leading to the creation and annihilation of particle-antiparticle pairs. The whole thing is kind of like how waves can form on the surface of water. You know, if you drop a stone into a pond, it creates ripples that spread out from the point of impact. These ripples are waves that carry energy. In the quantum world, particles can appear as ripples in the fabric of space-time, carrying energy with them. In short, the uncertainty principle allows for the spontaneous creation and annihilation of particles which pops matter into and out of existence. We can also think of this in terms of temperature. According to the Big Bang Theory, the trillionths of seconds after the popping out from the singularity were super hot. But did all this heat come from nothing? Well, maybe not. We've just seen how particles, like electrons, are always moving around a little bit. This means that we can never cool an electron down to absolute zero, the coldest possible temperature. Even if we could somehow remove all of a particle's energy, it would still have a little bit of motion, which means it would still have some residual heat. So, why is this important? Well, it turns out that this idea has some interesting implications for the origins of the universe. The idea that the universe came from nothing, that there was no matter, energy, or indeed anything else before the Big Bang, is really hard to square with quantum theory. See, if quantum mechanics tells us that particles always have some motion, even at very low temperatures, then it's possible that the universe came from a state of very low energy rather than true nothingness. So, let's go back to that boiling pot of water metaphor used to explain Alan Guth's eternal inflation theory and add a quantum ingredient into the mix. That water, from which the bubbles of our universe and potentially others emerged and are still emerging, can be thought of as a quantum vacuum. A quantum vacuum is a space that appears to be empty, but is actually filled with tiny particles that are constantly popping into and out of existence, as explained by good old Heisenberg and his uncertainty principle. These particles are called virtual particles because they don't actually last for very long and they can't be detected directly. They're created by the energy fluctuations that occur in the vacuum, called quantum vacuum fluctuations, by particles literally popping in and out of existence, going from something to nothing to something again on timescales so short that we can't really comprehend them. Back in 1970, a guy named Edward Tyron proposed the idea that our universe might have come into existence as a result of vacuum fluctuations. Now it was realized that a physical description of the universe prior to the Planck time, that is 10 to the negative 43 second after the Big Bang singularity, would require the introduction of quantum physics in addition to general relativity. On the quantum level, so-called virtual particles are thought to arise due to fluctuations in the energy locked up in the vacuum. Particles, which the Heisenberg indeterminacy principle allows to exist for a fleeting moment before dissolving back into the vacuum. It's similar to Alan Guth's eternal inflation theory in the sense that the universe is just one of many that randomly pop into and out of existence from the quantum vacuum. Kind of like the same way particles pop into and out of existence at tiny quantum mechanical scales. The implications of this theory are fascinating. 
If the universe really did emerge from a vacuum fluctuation, then it could be a part of an endless cycle of creation and destruction. But in the end, we're still left with the question of nothingness versus, well, thingness. One of the main quests in science is the pursuit of a so-called unified theory of everything, an explanation of the universe that links quantum theory to the theory of general relativity. Achieving this would be akin to creating some kind of God equation. This equation would basically be something like a wave function that could account for the quantum state of the entire universe and could very well help us solve the nothing-something conundrum. The concept of nothing, of zero, has been absolutely fundamental to mathematics and physics for absolutely ages, but it's turning out that the closer we're able to peer into the tiniest quantum realities of our universe, the less that nothing makes much sense at all. Now, it's going to be fascinating to see where our understanding of quantum states is going to lead us, and whether that place is somewhere or nowhere at all. Let us know in the comments your thoughts on how the universe came to life. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. See you next time on Factnominal.